So I thought you'd like to take a walk through my little meadow. Get past the Heliopsis here, the aphids. Look up the hill, past the prairie grasses, the big blue stem, the switchgrass. And here are the Monarda, Monarda fistulosa. Hmm, Monarda fistulosa seems to have a little June bug action going on. The bees, lots of bees. Wonderful companion is Heliopsis helianthoides, complete with aphids. There's always lots of great bumblebees. Little butterfly milkweed. Pink lily up the hill looking a little tattered after the grasshoppers have had at it. Cup plant. That little flea bane thing. Black eyed Susans with their normal variations. Biennials, they come back every other year. Set the rosette and then come back. This is all going to be bush at some point when the maples and the pines finish doing their thing. And the sun's coming out. Well, now it's Labor Day weekend, and we have the bee balm meadow, the Monarda meadow, full of seed heads of bee balm. Here they are with little lance leaf aster, Symphiotrichum europhyllum, and these little bee balm heads will be very much appreciated by goldfinches and chipping sparrows. A bit of a breezy day here. Rough goldenrod, Solidaga rugosa, Indian grass, Retibita seed heads, and a little further down the path we have all the action for late August, early September, which is my favorite. Black Eyed Susan, Sweet Black Eyed Susan, Rebecca Subtimentosa. Such a lovely doer, a little bit fragrant, somewhat of a mix between vanilla and tobacco, I'd say. Further up the hill, you can see pale yellow flowers of Helianthus Lemon Queen, a really good hybrid. Another tall one like the Rebecca Subtimentosa. And way up, like seven or eight feet up, have the flowers of New York ironweed, 
Brinonia nova boracensis. And this is a very popular pollinator plant. Hummingbirds, bumblebees, butterflies. Still a few Heliopsis, the ones that the deer haven't eaten off. I came up one day and pretty much every stem along the path had been chomped off at the flower. They like flowers. The end of the Jopai weed. Still the odd flower putting out enough nectar for bees to enjoy. Here's one of the prettier goldenrods, Solidago speciosa, showy goldenrod. And this becomes a major lure for bumblebees towards the end of the uh, season, well into October after Thanksgiving. These little flowers are still offering nectar as the bumblebees are preparing to end their season. One of my favorites. Helianthus lemon queen. Looking pretty beautiful. Pretty lemony. Mm hmm. I always love coming up in November and cutting the meadows down. The weather is usually just perfect for it. Sunshine, birds twittering. Nah. Snow squalls, rain, wind. Nasty. But it has to be done. the week after Christmas. There's a little light snow falling. We've had a big December melt, but winter is coming back with a vengeance. We're going to have a few inches today, a few inches tomorrow, and then a big snow in a couple of days. So my Monarda Meadow, as it stands, will be covered up. All the grasses, the stems of the uh, cup plant, the Silphium perfoliatum, the stems of the Monarda, Fistulosa, the stems of the Heliopsis, Rotibida, Rudbeckia subtimentosa. They're all now about 12 inches tall after my November chop down. Uh, in the meadow are a white pine and a red pine. The red pine is, uh, is not as common around here, Pinus resinosa, as the white but it offers a different habitat for birds. One little red maple that I've been carefully trimming through the years, and in the winter you can, you can see that. Thought I'd trim it rather than let the deer trim it. They have enough to eat. So this is the meadow. Um, you can still see the odd little Menard. I call it the Menard Meadow because it seems to be the most common wildflower here. It spreads the most easily and the birds love it. The bees love it as we saw earlier in the summer. A little meadow until the daffodils come up in April and we'll continue then. Sayonara. Well it's early May after a long cold winter and this is the Monarda Meadow. Grasses that have been cut down in November, and daffodils. This is my great joy, coming to Muskoka in spring. 
Oh, these daffodils love it on this sandy, acidic hillside. Give me lots of bouquets. And if you look closely here, you see this garden. The lupins, tiny lupins coming up. And nearby, there is the Monarda, Monarda fistulosa. Wild bee bomb. A little further up, a little lusty cup plant, Sophium profoliatum. And I see penstemon in here. But right now, it's a daffodil meadow. Not exactly a w William Wordsworth meadow, but good enough for Muskoka. May 3rd. Well, here we are, June 12th, 2015. And the bee balm meadow is rising from the winter dead. The daffodils are finished, and it is very, very green. We have some oxeye daisies. We have buttercups. We have a path that's in danger of being obliterated by weeds and perennials. And we have the emergence of all of the summer perennials, including the bee balm and the cup flower. Lots of birds. It's quiet here this weekend. And normally, this meadow would be full of lupins. I'm not quite sure what happened this year. I see the foliage. I see the plants, but many of them did not bloom. However, we have a few, and I think it's worth it to celebrate. We have a lot of mosquitoes. At the moment, at the moment, I am being attacked from all sides. We've had rain all day, soaking wet rain. Let's go up and have a better look at these. Tomorrow, they will be alive with bumblebees. Today, they are just alive with mosquitoes. Lots and lots of mosquitoes. I thought it would be good to chance another try to let you see what life is like in the Canadian bush in June. I'll put mosquito repellent on. I'm not sure that's going to do it. Oh, and I have a special outfit. This is my mosquito repelling outfit. It doesn't always work, but it makes me feel better. It's kind of a throwback to the 70s as well. Let's see how many mosquitoes we can bring into the film. I think I'm under attack. Might be a better idea to go inside. <laughs>